Hi children, students. In this video, we're going to talk about dividing decimals. So I posed a problem, and we're going to have to use dividing decimals to solve this problem. Ella inherited 175 and 2 tenths acres of land. Ooh, I wish I was in Ella's family. She wanted to zone the land, and that zoning, you guys, means kind of breaking up the land. She wanted to zone the land as one and five tenths acre lots for subdivision. How many lots could be made? So we're going to read it one more time because children, just like a book or a movie or a song, when you view it, read it, or see it, or listen to it, for the second time, you pick up on details you might not have the first time you um, did it. So, Ella inherited 175 and 2 tenths acres of land. She wanted to zone the land as 1 and 5 tenths acre lots for subdivision. How many lots could be made? So, the dividend is the total amount of land she inherited. So that would be 175 and 2 tenths. I'm going to make my division house or set up my division symbol. And the 1 and 5 tenths acres are the size of each lot. So we're trying to figure out how many lots she could make in her subdivision. So that's one and five tenths. The most important, mm, one of the most important steps when dividing decimals is to move the decimal to the wall. And however many place values you move this decimal to the wall, and when I talk about the wall, I talk about the wall on our division house. So however many place values you move that division, or excuse me, the decimal point to the division wall, that's what you have to do with your dividend as well. So let's go ahead and do that step. So you're going to take the decimal point and move it to the wall, which was only one place value. So this decimal right here doesn't even exist anymore. Then, however many place values you move the decimal in the divisor, that's what you do to your dividend. So here's the decimal. We're going to move it one place value just like we did with our divisor. This decimal no longer exists. Then, we're going to go ahead and put that decimal directly above the decimal in the dividend. We're going to put the decimal right in the quotient so we know where the decimal point will be in the quotient. It goes directly above the decimal once we've moved it in the dividend. Now it's time for us to solve. Okay, so there's those three steps that you have to do when you're dividing decimals before you even begin the division part, students. It's move the decimal to the wall in the divisor Move the decimal the same amount of place values from the divisor. Move the same amount of place values in the dividend. And then place your decimal point above in the quotient. Okay. Now, if there was no decimal point over here in the divisor, you don't have to worry about moving the decimal point in the dividend you would just place it in the quotient directly above it. Let me state that one more time, children. 
if there are no decimal points in the divisor and there is a decimal point in the dividend, just simply rewrite the decimal point up in the quotient where you would find it in the dividend. Okay, now it's time to solve. So, we know that 15 cannot go into 1, but 15 can go into 17 one time. And then 1 times 15 is 15. And we're going to subtract, and that would be 2. I'm going to use a different color each time we redo the steps with division. So I'm going to bring down that 5, and that 5 is part of our new dividend, which is 25. So now we have to divide 15 into 25. Excuse me. 15 can go into 25 one time. And then 1 times 15 is 15. And we subtract. And 15 from 25 would be 10. We're going to bring down the 2. And we have to think to ourselves, how many times can 15 go into 102? Well, I'm not sure. So I'm going to speed add 15 down the side of my paper to figure out how many times 15 could go into 102. Children, speed adding is just another word for multiplication. You could keep multiplying 15 by a number until you get close to 102 without going over. Or if you're a little rusty on your multiplication, you can speed add. 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 15 is 45, plus another 15 is 60. So I'm going to add 15 again, and that's 75. And then I'm going to add 15 again. And that's 90. Do you think we could add 15 one more time? No. No. Why? It would go over. It would go over. If we add 15 to this, it would go to 105, and that would be over our dividend of 102. So let's count the amount of 15s we've added. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 15 must go into 102 six times. And then 6 times 15, we already have it right here, which is 90. And we're going to subtract 90 from 102, which is 12. And let's go ahead and put a zero right here to bring it down as another digit to bring down. I like to make the sound effect when I'm bringing down each dis digit. Did you like that? Now we have to figure out, children, how many times 15 can go into 120. So we have up to 90 right here. So let's add another 15 to it. And that will give us 105. Place it up here so we can see it. And then I'm going to add 15 one more time. And that gives us 120. 
So we know that 15 goes into 120 evenly, and that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. And we know 8 times 15 would be 120. I'm sorry, y'all. I ran out of room. And when we subtract 120 from 120, we get 0. Sorry about that, y'all.